Welcome to the Grind It Podcast. You know, life can be such a grind at times, and so we're here sharing God's Word with you to encourage you to keep grinding and to not give up. It's time to grind. So here's the host of the Grind It Podcast, the old school skateboarder himself, Randall Tucker. I'm preaching on guitars and Jesus, and in the, in the, the last... Uh, podcast in the, the first part of the sermon I talked about how uh, there's expensive guitars and there's cheap guitars and and how uh, Jesus would be the real deal the, the Martin the expensive Martin guitar it, it, it just has the, the better sound better quality just better everything and we are the version of the Ibanez guitar or my, my cheaper guitar uh, you know, we 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 have Jesus. We we're filled with Jesus through the power of the Holy Spirit, but we're not Jesus. We are to be Jesus's hands and feet, but we're still human. We still, unfortunately, do bad things. We sin. We fall short of God's glory on a daily basis. Why? Because we're not Jesus. He was the only one who was perfect in every way. He and he had to be that way to be our sacrificial lamb. And to be able to die for our sins. But we are, we try our best to be a Martin guitar, but far too often we're the cheaper model guitar. But nonetheless, we are a guitar. We can still play and we can still jam. We can still, still tell people about Jesus. We can still show the love of Jesus. And that's the verse I shared was uh, of Ephesians 5 where Paul says that we are to imitate God. And, and, and the way we do that is following the example that Christ left for us and that it was a great example of love. And so we are to love people as Jesus loved people. And today, I'm, I want to share this thought with you. A guitar has to be played. A guitar has to be played. Because if, if a guitar sits too long, what happens is the strings literally die. Uh, the other day, I, I have a little Debbie route, and 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 um, I'm always talking to to the store owners, you know, and, and just building customer relations. And uh, this one of the store owners uh, was talking. We got to talk about guitars one day, and he said, "Well, I've I've got a, a guitar uh, up there on top of that meat case," and I said, "You mind if I get it and take a look at it?" And uh, Sure enough, I uh, went up there, climbed on top of the case, pulled it down, opened the guitar case, opened it up, and it's an Epiphone, an acoustic uh, guitar Epiphone. And it, and it looked good. It, it was a beautiful guitar. And uh, I picked it up out of the case and and uh, went to tune it, went to play it, and it was just a thud. And I said, Nick, I said, when is the last time someone played this guitar, man? He said, all oh, that thing's been sitting up there for years and years. It's been untouched. He said, it's probably been at least seven to ten years. I said, well, I can tell by the way these strings are because, I mean, I just went to stroke those strings and it was literally just a, a thud. And, 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 and so this guitar had literally just been sitting up on this case untouched in its guitar case and it kept the dust off of it. It kept the guitar looking beautiful, but the strings, because the guitar hasn't been played in years, the strings, and he even told me, he said, that, he said it's got new strings on it, but see, he knows nothing about guitars, and he doesn't play guitar. He, I think he just had it to, to resell and make money, but he just set it up on this meat case and forgot about it. And so even though the guitar was a, a nice guitar, even though it was a, a, a very beautiful guitar, and even though it had new strings on it, since it hasn't been played in years, those new strings, they literally died. And, and the only thing they could do was produce a thud. It, it, it was just wasting away all these opportunities to, to be played and, and, and to bring enjoyment into somebody's life. It was literally just sitting on top of that meat case wasting away and and i got to thinking this you know this is a way a lot of christians live their lives they they know jesus 
they love Jesus, or at least they say they do. And maybe they even have a good relationship with Jesus. They, they read the Word, and they pray to God, and, and so they have this good relationship with Jesus, but they, they're really not involved with the church, their, their local church. They, they, they don't really get involved in people's lives. They just, you know, they, just, they have just set themselves, if you will, on the shelf, and they just keep to themselves, and they never share their faith. They never share Jesus. They never show Jesus. They don't imitate Jesus. They just, like the guitar, they just sit in the case and look pretty. And that there's a danger in that because if the guitar sits too long, the strings die. In James chapter 2, verses 14 through 26, James writes this. What good is it, dear brothers and sisters, if you say you have faith but don't show it by your actions? I mean, right off the bat, James is just like, boom! You want to say you have faith and you want to say you love Jesus and you want to say you imitate God and you imitate Jesus. Well, what good is it? And he's talking to Christians because he says, Dear brothers and sisters, if you say you have faith but you don't show it by your actions. In other words, you're like that guitar that's sitting in the case on top of the meat case. You're, 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 you're protected. You're sitting in your little shell and, and, and you call yourself a Christian, you, you say you're a guitar, which you are, because obviously you, you, know, you look like the guitar and you have the strings, but when you pluck the strings, they're dead because the, nothing's going on in your spiritual life, if you will. What good is it, dear brothers and sisters, if you say you have faith, but you don't show it by your actions? Can that kind of faith save anyone? Suppose you see a brother or sister who has no faith, food or clothing and you say goodbye and have a good day stay warm and eat well but then you don't give that person any food or clothing i mean what good does that do and, that, and that's what james says what good does that do so you see i mean it, it, on, on my little debbie route i'm in east knoxville uh which is the the, the rough part of knoxville and that's putting it very politely uh, a lot of drugs. I see. I see drug deals going on all the time. I see people taking, literally taking the drugs. There's needles all over the place. Uh, there's a lot of homeless. There's a lot of poverty on my route. I, I just, I, I, I see so many. I mean, so much weed. So many people. You just smell it. I mean, it's just all over the place. And 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 and, and I. I take the opportunities that I can and, and I give these people some of my cakes sometimes uh, when the opportunity presents itself and, 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 uh, and, and I try to uh, be a good example for them and I try to be positive and, and, and I have conversations with them and, and try to get to know these people and, and every so often uh, you know I'll throw Jesus into the mix it just depends on how, how well I get to know the person but every time that I give them food, uh, I always tell them why I, I am feeding them. And I just say, hey, I'm a Christian. I follow Christ and I love to help people. Um, and so hopefully I'm, I'm, I'm setting a, a foundation there to where I can really one day have a conversation with them and really share Jesus uh, with these individuals that, that I come in contact with just about every week. Um, but what if I just came up to, to these people and I said, look at your poor condition. I, I just feel so sorry for you. I know, I know you've been overtaken with drugs. I know you had this addiction. I, I know you're living in the streets. I know that you don't have a place to lay your head down at night to get out of the rain or to get out of the cold weather. I just, I'm so sorry that you're living in this condition. I know you're hungry. I know you're thirsty. Uh, and I know there's a lot of food in that re in that restaurant. I know there's a lot of food and drink in, in this store that I'm servicing. I know I have cakes on my truck, but you can't have any of it. And I'm not going to buy you any of it. But I love Jesus. What 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 good is that going to do? I mean, what, what, what kind of message am I portraying? You know, what if I just said, well, I'm not giving you any money because I know all you're going to do is buy alcohol with it. You alcoholic. You drug addict. You know, I know you're just going to go off and buy the drugs. 
But hey, praise Jesus. What what is that? What good does that do? Did, did Jesus was Jesus ever concerned about a person's condition? And and say, well, you know, if I heal you, you're just gonna because he would say, go and sin no more. What if he would have said, I'm not gonna heal you because you just you're just gonna go and and live a crazy life and you're just gonna be a sinner because you are a sinner. So what good is it gonna do to heal you? Because you're not gonna give me glory. You're not gonna. Uh, tell people about me. You're just going to go and live your own life and do your own thing and, and do this and that. And you're not going to glorify me. Jesus wasn't concerned with that. He got involved in people's lives and he touched people. He healed people. He gave them hope. And, and, and listen to what James is saying. He says, you know, if you're going to be this guitar and, and look pretty, but you're just going to sit in the case and, and, and not ever be played. What good is that? You're not doing anybody any favors. Nobody can hear your melodies. Nobody can hear the music that you're making. You're not doing anything. And your strings are going to die. And they do die if, if, if you're not played. And, and, and he's saying, what good is it if you say you have faith? What good is it if you say you love Jesus and you serve Jesus, but you see these people who have a need, but you never meet their needs? What, what good is your faith doing you? That's exactly what James is saying. What good does that do? And then he says in verse 17 of chapter 2, he says, So you see, faith by itself isn't enough. Unless it produces good deeds, it is dead and useless. It's dead. You're facing your, if you're not going to be out there showing people Jesus, if you're not going to be uh, be acting on your faith and you're just going to be sitting in the guitar case and looking pretty and your strings are dying, he says, what good is it? It's dead and useless like your strings where they've been sitting for so long and never being played, never being used. Now, someone may argue some people have faith and others have good deeds, but I say, well, he, he says, uh, what good does that do? So you see, faith by itself isn't enough. Unless it produces good deeds, it is dead and useless. Now some may argue some people have faith and others have good deeds, but I say, how can you show me your faith if you don't have good deeds? I will show you my faith by my good deeds. You say you have faith, for you believe that there is one God. Good for you. Even the demons believe this, and they tremble in terror. How foolish. Can't you see that faith without good deeds is useless? He says, man, you're no different than a demon because demons e believe in Jesus and they even tremble at the name of Jesus. But you just take Jesus for granted. You, if you're not out there sharing your faith and, and, and having good deeds and telling people why you have those good deeds, it's useless. Don't you remember that our ancestor Abraham was shown to be right with God by his actions when he offered his son Isaac on the altar? You see, his faith and his actions worked together. His actions made his faith complete. And so it happened, just as the scriptures say, Abraham believed God and God counted him as righteous because of his faith. He was even called the friend of God. So you see, we are shown to be right with God by what we do and not by faith alone. Rahab, the prostitute, is another example, James says. She was shown to be right with God by her actions when she hid those messengers and sent them safely away by a different road. You know what Rahab did? She lied. Because the people of Jericho knew that those spies were sent into the land to spy out the land. They, what better place to hide than in a prostitute? Hey, we're here to see the prostitute. We're not here... To, to check out the land. We're here, you know, to get us a piece of the action with the prostitute. And so they go into the prostitute's house. She hides them. They, she, he, he, the, the spies tell her what's going on. And she says, look, I'll help you if you remember me and my family when, you, when your God brings you into this land and you destroy the land and take us over. And they said, okay, you take this, this red scarlet uh, material and you hang it outside your window. And when, when we come to destroy the city and God destroys this city, you and your household, whoever's in your house here inside this wall, the, Jer the walls around Jericho, that's where her house was. 
when we see this red, this piece of red, this scarlet material hanging out the window, anybody that's in your house, they'll be saved. And so these people, they come and they knock on the door, Rahab's door, and they say, where's the spies? She says, what are you talking about? Well, I don't have no spies here. I, I, I don't know what you're talking about. Oh, no, we saw them come in here. We know they're in your home. And she says, they're not here. They, they're gone. They, they, but they were there. See, she lied. But God honored that. God honored her. It, it was because of her faith. And it was because of her actions that, that she helped these people of God. And they were able to, to go back and, and, and give their report. And then, uh, you know, a few days later, they come in and conquer the city. And they march around the wall of Jericho seven times. And on the seventh day, the walls fall. And Rahab and her family are saved. And matter of fact, if you read the lineage of Jesus found in Matthew 1, you'll see Rahab mentioned in that lineage. God took a prostitute... And she fits in the lineage of the Messiah, Jesus. Rahab the prostitute is another example. She was shown to be right with God by her actions when she hid those messengers and sent them safely away by a different road. Just as the body is dead without breath. When we stop breathing, we're dead. Our heart stops beating, our brain stops functioning, our blood start, stops flowing, we're dead. The body is dead. Just as the body is dead without breath, so also faith is dead without good works. And people say, I don't have to work to be saved. You're exactly right. You don't have to work to be saved. We're saved by grace through faith. But if we don't work because we are saved, because you know, Jesus didn't save us to be satisfied. Jesus saved us to work. And we don't want to work because we don't like that. We work 40 hours a week or we work 50 hours a week or we work 60 hours a week and we're tired and we don't want to think of church as work we don't want to think of serving God as work we want to come to the church building and we want to go to the services and we want to sit on our butt and not do anything that's why today you have to beg people it doesn't matter how big the church is you could have five people you could have 50 people you could have 500 people you could have 5,000 people and i guarantee you your church is still suffering from from a lack of people who do not want to get involved and week after week after week they're giving announcements and the preacher has to get up and they're telling all these needs that we have in the church services. And, and they're literally begging people to fill positions. But people don't want to because we're tired and we don't want to work. We don't want to go out and, 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 and meet people's needs in the community. We don't want to get involved. We want to rest. You know, we want to divert back to the Sabbath day when it was a day of rest. But serving Jesus is not rest. It, it's a, and it's not just a one day a week thing. It's not just on Sunday morning. It's an everyday thing. When, we're, when you're out there doing your 40 hour a week job or 50 hour a week job, however many hours a, a, a week that you work, you're taking Jesus with you and you're being an example of Jesus. You're sharing Jesus, or at least I hope that you are, you're sharing your faith with others and, 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 and you're, you, know, you, you see a need. When, when you're in the line at Walmart, you're in the line at Dollar General, you're in the line at the grocery store, listen. Just listen to the people that are around you. And here's the thing. Don't be just so caught up in yourself you know, sitting back there in the guitar case looking pretty and, and not collecting dust when your string's dying. Don't be so selfish and, and, and just worry about yourself. Listen to other people. And, and, and here's the thing. If, if we will just listen to other people, they will tell you their need. And, and, and when you hear their need, just don't say, Oh, I'm, bless you. I'm going to pray for you. And then never go home and pray for them. Or just say, How can I help meet your need? And actually get involved. I mean, that, that's what it. That's what Jesus did. He got involved in people's lives. When you when you see the church beginning in Acts chapter two, and 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 you see 
Paul and, and Barnabas go on these missionary journeys and start these churches. How do you think they started those churches? They literally got involved in people's lives. I mean, when, when the, the first convert that Paul had in Europe was, was a lady named Lydia. He was going there because of the Macedonian call. And he's expecting, you know, these crowds of people who, you know, wanted to hear about Jesus. But no, he, he goes in uh, to Philippi and, and, and only thing he could find, well, he couldn't find anybody. And he goes to the river and there's this woman and, and a group of her friends and they're praying by the river. And Paul decides to get involved in their conversation. And in, in their conversation, he starts to tell them about Jesus. And, and, and they wanted to hear more about Jesus and they end up being obedient to the gospel and, and its message and they're baptized for their mission and their sins. And, and Lydia starts a church in her home. It's, it, it, it's, it's about our faith, but it's also about our actions. And, and we can't have faith without the actions because if we don't have the actions that go along with our faith, James says, not me, but James says, that our faith is like those strings on the guitar that has sit in Nick's uh, uh, guitar case on top of that meat case for a long time. The, the strings just die. We're dead. Faith without works is dead. And, and it, it's sad that a very small percentage of the, the work that is going on in a church is done by just a handful of people. And I, I just want to tell you that, that there, there's a lot of burnout in our churches today. You know, it, First of all, the churches put too much on the preacher. You know, they, they, they put stuff on the preacher that elders should be doing. You know, Well, he's a paid position, and he's the only one that's paid. And you might have a few other little ministers that you know that do certain things get paid like a worship minister or a family minister or whatever it gets paid at a little part-time salary or whatever and they may have a, a few responsibilities but but the church puts way too much on a preacher and a preacher gets burned out really really fast uh they should be doing you know they got the preacher doing all the visitation doing the funerals and doing the weddings and 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 preaching every week and you know and making sure this is done and that's done and and in smaller churches, they do everything. Cause I, I worked with a lot of smaller churches. I was the janitor. I was everything. I, you know, I did it all. And, and and with all of that comes burnout. And, and and so I would say to the churches, read your Bibles, read read the responsibilities of church leaders, and divide it up the way it should be. And just because you pay a guy, doesn't really mean that you should put all the responsibility on the one dude. Because it's every Christian's responsibility to do the same thing that we put on the, what we call the pastor. But in reality, when you read the book of Acts and the church begins, and, and, and even when Paul was starting, going around starting these churches, Paul and Barnabas, there, there are pastors. Every time the, a, a pastor is mentioned in the New Testament when the church began, it's always plural. There's more than one. There's just not one pastor with a whole bunch of little minions underneath him where he's, uh, you know, um, being authoritarian over these people. It's not like that. They're pastors. It's plural. Elders, bishops, uh, uh, presbyterians. Uh, it's all the same thing. It, it, they're, they're church leaders. Then you have deacons who, who also help out. With, with, with some stuff. And, 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 and when you read the book of Acts and, and you see these qualifications for elders and deacons and, and, and Timothy and Titus, you see this. So why do we put all the responsibility on this one man just because we pay him? You know, it's, it's, it, 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 it's not right. And so burnout comes. Not only look the part, but be the part. Play. Get involved. Know your role. Whether it's playing in a worship band, whether it's singing in a worship band, whether it's, it, it, it's uh, preaching, or whether it, it, it's being an elder or a deacon or a Sunday school teacher or, or being a, 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 just a person out in the crowd that shakes a hand when somebody walks through the door or whether you don't even get involved in, in, in a church service, but yet 
you, you cook for others or, or you make phone calls to encourage others or you send emails to encourage others. Or you send greeting cards. And there's, there's just so many things that we can do to encourage others. You have a part. You have a role. The Holy Spirit has given you a special talent, a special ability. And my challenge is to you is to use it. If you hadn't used it in a long time, please pick it up and use it. Create, renew, restore. And then I will teach transgressors your way. It is my prayer today that you will allow God to use you to bring Him glory. That you will allow God to use you not just in mighty ways, but in small ways. Because in those small things that, that goes unnoticed, God is glorified in a mighty way. And people are encouraged to keep on keeping on. And that's what, we're, that's what we do with the Grinded Podcast. We encourage people to not give up and to keep going. And if you would do your part... And not only have faith, but share your faith and be the hands and the feet of Jesus and be the example of Jesus and love others like Jesus loved others. You will encourage them to not give up, but to keep going. God bless you. And uh, you can go back and listen to part one. This was part two of the guitar sermon. There will be a part three and a part four and maybe even a part five. So I hope that you will come back and, and listen to part three. God bless you. Have a great day. Thank you for listening to the Grinded Podcast today. May God bless you. If you have any comments or questions, you can email them to us at thegrinditpodcast at gmail.com. If you would like Randy to come and speak at your church or your next event, you can contact him through that same email address. Also, I would like to thank Jody Foster's Army, also known as JFA, for their song, Abba, as we use for our intro and our outro off their untitled 1984 album. May God bless you, and remember, keep your eyes on Jesus and keep grinding.